getting hugs, but she'll tell us what exactly is it and what she's all about, especially when it comes to the sphere specifics of matters mental health. Uh, good morning to you, Nasim. Good morning. You're welcome. So you can go right up into it. What exactly is postpartum depression and what exactly happens to, to, to people that have postpartum depression? Is it diagnosed? Does it have treatment? And what are some of the incidences or some of the experiences you've also had as a lead psychologist when it comes to that space? Okay, so right into it, right? Yeah. So for you to get a better concept of what postpartum is, then you need to understand the different categories of mental health. So we have like five uh, yeah. We have five ma main ones, but we also have there are like seven categories. So maybe I'll mention just a few. So we have anxiety uh, disorders. So under anxiety disorders, you have things like GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. You have OCD, right. and you have PTSD. Right. Uh, and then now from there, you also have now mood disorders. So which yeah. we'll now be talking about today. So under right. mood disorders, we have depression which right. depression also has a category of its own wi right. with seven different types of uh, depression. So one, we have major depressive disorders, which is okay. also called clinical uh, depression. We also have uh, PMDD, premenstrual. Uh, clinical meaning it has been diagnosed by yes, a doctor. Yes, clinically, yes. Or clinically, yes. and now on medication as well. Exactly, so you okay. can either use medication or you can use psychotherapy. Right. But all you can combine both, either psychotherapy and medication, you can use both of them. So okay. it depends with the levels and severity of what you have. Right. And then now from there we have PMDD, which mainly affects women. It's premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Right. So I normally call it PMS on steroids. Right. So it also mm. comes with suicidal ideations. And sadly, most women don't know they're going through it because you right. find a week before your menses, a week during your menses, and a week after your menses, you're always right. in a sort of mood. Right. So either it also- You've called it P? PMDD, premenstrual oh. dysphoric disorder. Right. So most women don't know Is it like one of the latest uh, mental health? It's not, it's not latest. I mean, it has always been there. It's always been there. Like I right. said, most people don't know about this. So right. if you're a I'm woman- I'm also learning, I'm shocked. Exactly. I've never heard of it. Exactly. I'm hearing it from, now you are professional. Like exactly. women go through a certain type of mental health before their periods. Yes, right? and not, not all of them, but not all of them. majority of majority them. Of so them. some might have okay. PMS, the kawaida cramping, yeah. a little bit of mood swing, but others now theirs is on steroids. So right. uh, they're always on like, extreme mood. This is where people get in beefs with their partners. You know, yeah. it also it's also paired with suicidal ideation. So for right. a while you think maybe you're suicidal, but maybe right. it's just PMDD. So even when we're screening, we right. like to rule out certain things things in terms of what might be the reason behind either your suicidal ideations right. and everything. For, uh, on, on that PMDD, uh, does it stem from a place of hormonal issues? Yes, right. uh, that and also underlining conditions. So there are certain uh -huh. people we call risk factors and I'll also mention them when we're talking about postpartum. Right. So risk factors are people that are at risk of experiencing this. So either maybe you have a history of depression, you've had a history of suicidal ideations and everything. So during your menses, a week before your <coughs> menses, your hormones are heightened. So yeah. it triggers also that. And it's like it's a pattern, just a week before. A week before, oh. it's supposed to be a week before, right. during your menses and a week after. So in a month, can right. you imagine you're only fine one week? Oh my if a goodness. month has four weeks, so you're okay just one week. Mm -hmm. So it's really sad that most women don't know they're going through this. Right. So they feel like that's just who they are, but technically it's yeah. a condition. And the good thing is once you realize it, then you know how to manage it. Because if mm -hmm. you're always getting in arguments, you'll know how to cope with it. You'll know instead yeah. of texting, I'll just refrain from texting a lot because I might end up saying something I don't mean. Right. And, and you so end up regretting. Yes. But then also, I believe also one of the main solution is monitoring things that trigger trigger you because triggers yes. work a lot especially with people with mental health exactly issues like exactly. what makes you angry what makes you to lash out what exactly. makes you have an outburst what makes you become mean mm -hmm. to some people mm -hmm. like are they triggering you and is it you the problem or them I I talk about yes. that as well yes so also about triggers sorry if i digress a little bit just yeah, sure, sure, rail, sure, sure, <laughs> rail me yeah. back in so when you talk about triggers in psychology, there's something we call a cognitive triangle. So a, what a, a cognitive, a triangle, cognitive triangle, triangle. Yes. Yeah. So what a cognitive triangle is, it states for you to react to something, there has to be a thought. Right. 
Right. And then your thought affects your feelings, your feelings affect your behavior. So that's the whole right. triangle. Mm -hmm. But then again, for you to have this thought, there has to be a trigger. So now the trigger is a situation. Right. Either a person, something uh, someone said, or an whatever. Event. An right. event or right. whatever. So for yeah. you to really... Uh, so for this is for cognitive restructuring. So cognitive restructuring states you need first of all to understand what is happening in your brain so that right. you can know how you behave or how you feel and yeah. how it affects your day to day. So right. for you to know that then you need to know what triggers me. So right. under those triggers <coughs> you think about the thought so there's something yeah. called an automatic thought. Automatic thought. So, yes. Yeah. So the automatic thought is the first thought that comes when a situation happens. happens. For yeah. instance. For example the grief. Uh, I, I, I like the one that you know You've been told you've just lost your dad. He has, he has died in a road accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly happens to that person's brain? And for example, they're in the middle of a job. Mm -hmm. They're just working and boom, a notification, a call. Uh, dad has been found dead at Mombasa Road. Mm -hmm. you know, what will happen in that person's brain? Exactly. So now, for, for, uh, so the thought that the automatic thought that will come, it will depend on how this person interprets the message they, they got. So you'll find there's someone that will freeze and they'll go with their normal day to day until five. Now, after they clock out, that's when it starts sinking in that, okay, I got this yeah. news. So it starts sinking in. And then there's another person that will immediately react on it. So again, it's how you interpret the situation or whatever news that you're given. Right. So with that, you need to understand how does that then affect how I feel and how does that affect how I behave? Because if you think negatively, then most right. definitely you'll have a negative feeling about it and then you'll behave in a negative way. Right. So, yeah. So Le that now let's, let's get back to depression again yes. from the start <laughs> before we now get back to postpartum now or specifically about mothers. So for, for a person who doesn't, you know, understand what depression exactly means, because we've always had somebody say, uh, I feel too damn depressed. Yeah. It's very common to hear <laughs> someone to say, I, I feel depressed today. I'll mm -hmm. not go to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read somewhere self-diagnosis is always misdiagnosis. I don't know how true is it from an expert's mindset. Please talk about that. So first of all, we misuse those terms a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, depressed. I'm depressed. Right. Oh, I'm bipolar. Today I just feel bipolar. Today. Oh. So mm -hmm. we misuse those terms a lot. So for you right. to be diagnosed with depression, you have to have experienced the same moods in terms of low moods. Uh, you know, you don't want to engage, withdrawal and everything. For two weeks so mm. come oh, and it, must, go for it must be for two weeks all right because if it's not for two weeks then that's mm. not depression and mm. by two weeks, be something I mean else consecutive huh? i mean consecutively, oh, consecutively. See, leo, umemka, yeah. you're feeling a little bit low kesho kofiti the other day kofiti then on thursday you feel again low and then you're like okay yeah i'm depressed so that's not depression this right. thing needs to be continuous for at least two weeks right. for you to be clinically diagnosed with depression. So right. if it just happens, then that's just stress as a kaida. And as a human being, we all go through stresses. Right. So Is stress a type of depression? Stress might lead to depression. Oh, might so, lead to yes, depression. Yes, so those we call them uh, contributing uh, causes are right. contributing factors, something that might lead to it. So if you don't know how to manage your stress well, so again, allow me to digress, Kidogo. So under sure. stress, we divide it into three. Uh -huh. Perceived stress. Perceived? So perceived stress mm -hmm. is your perception. Whatever right. might stress me, might not stress you. Right? right? So our perception mm -hmm. is different. So in right. as a, maybe Mimi, issue na stress is how I perceive it. So right. anything small, I either see it as a big thing and it stresses me out. So right. if the issue is perception, then it means we need to deal with your cognitive you know, triangle and cognitive restructuring help right. you understand and help you learn how to perceive things differently and positively, right? right. And mm -hmm. then now there's now the wellness stress. Uh -huh. So the wellness stress, there's some, I normally say this a lot, there's something we call the eight dimension of well-being. So this states... Eight dimensions of well-being. Well-being. Okay. So it states for you to be well, these eight areas need to balance. Uh -huh. Which career, are basic so mention? basically career, mm. your finances, family, leisure, you know, spirituality and all that. So for you to be well, right. these 
areas need to balance. But as humans, we find we fixate so much on one, right. we neglect the other. Like career more. Either we, we fixate on career more, <laughs> or finances, or finances more. more, or, or even family physical, more. physical more. Like yes, you or gym health. A lot. Exa yeah. Exactly, physical. <laughs> or, you know, right. and a physical, we call it the health. So you fixate so much on one right. that yeah. the rest are neglected. So there's a misbalance. So the other one overwhelms this. Exactly. Ones. So right. Napatam, so and then you're still stressed. So people are like, this mm, person has a good family, yeah. has a good job. It's because your yeah. wellness uh, balance is not scaled yeah, well. But it's other people can't see that. Yes, yeah. and even for you, if you don't understand what your goals are when it comes to these eight right. dimensions, then you wouldn't know where the miss is. So people yeah. are confused like, what am I missing out? Why am yeah. I ungrateful? So you lose terms like that. Like, why am I not being content in this and that? So kume kuna area moja ume neglect. So yeah. the wellness uh, stress, stress scale uh, assesses that. Yeah. How content are you with your eight dimensions? And yeah. then now from there, we look at now the coping mechanisms, coping, uh, coping inventories of stress. Do you right. have support systems of when you're stressed, are there things that you go to, are there things that bring you joy, you know, things that can help ease you and everything. So when we look right. at stress, we look at it in those three ways. Right. So it, you need to understand how you perceive things. You need to understand your wellness uh, skill. Right. Uh, is it balanced enough? And you also need to know, do I have good coping mechanisms do i have yeah. support systems that i can reach out to or things i do that can bring me you know joy when i'm in a kafunk yeah. mood or you yeah. know when i'm not okay and and joy is really good there's somebody who said you better have joy than peace because peace can be temporary but joy is internal and yes. it could be permanent Exactly. Now, let's uh, deep dive to postpartum depression. Now, uh, there's, there's this crazy incident that happened in Kitengela where the mother, I think she slaughtered her kid and ripped apart, you know, part of the kid's body. And then there's one that happened in Eldori yesterday where the mother slaughtered again a two-year-old and tried to harm the six-year-old and even now tried to harm herself. Mm -hmm. Can we relate that to some of these issues, especially in Kavsumata's postpartum depression? And what exactly happens to a mother Especially in that instance where she's given birth, let's say like today, what usually happens in her body and in mm -hmm. her mind before she gets to such places? Okay, so I'll answer that <coughs> in two different ways. So one, first of all, there are different types of, we call them postpartum psychiatric issues. So postpartum psychiatric, psychiatric issues. Yes, uh -huh. psychiatric issues. So okay. under those, there are three things. Baby blues which is no. postpartum blues, but commonly known as baby blues. So this is where... Oh, baby a mom fever? <laughs> um, what does that mean? Please explain what baby blues is. Baby mean. fever is very different. Oh, baby think. fever is more of excitement and happiness. <laughs> yes, and uh, I don't think that is psychological. I don't think uh -huh. it's in the DSM-5 or something about okay. baby fevers. Uh -huh. But, but I mean, blues? Baby blues uh -huh. is whereby a mom has just given birth, and mm -hmm. then there are things that different so again i'll go back to contributing factors so there are certain contributing factors that might lead to you know uh postpartum, postpartum because there's no one mm -hmm. exact thing that leads to post postpartum but uh -huh. there are different things that might lead, lead to, to it so okay. one of the contributing factors to either baby blues postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis is hormones because right. again you figure out this person has carried a whole human being for you know nine months and everything they've just given birth the placenta is out and everything so right. the hormone shift from up here all the way to, to down zero. here yeah. so of course there'll be those two depressive states because something feels a little bit off right mm -hmm. so that may be one of it another thing is sleep deprivation again you figure out you've just had a new uh, baby the sleeping patterns are very different you're up at night almost four or five times and everything so you might become sleep deprived right. so that might also lead to you know that car blues and you know depressive state and everything mm. and then mm. another thing is anxiety especially to new moms that anxiety of will i be a good mom right. do i have this you know how how will i turn out how will my baby be and on all those you know anxious thoughts that you have so right. if all these things are not addressed and taken care of then right. it might lead to the three types of postpartum Right. So the baby blues, the difference about the baby blues is it doesn't affect how you take care of yourself as a mom and how yeah. you take care of your <coughs> kid. And the thing about it is it wears off by itself. 
Oh, so, it doesn't need like medication. No, go it's to just a, a blues, yeah. and and then it uh, it lasts for around one week to mm. one and a half weeks. It doesn't go past the two weeks threshold mm. of clinically being diagnosed with it. So it wears off. There's a place of right where it says it can even go up to past three years. No, no, that is uh -huh. postpartum. Baby blues only goes for oh, within a week weeks. or two weeks. Uh -huh. So maximum. it's self-healing. Yes. It's more of the body it's to recovering area. itself. Yes. It, now for a mother that doesn't have the tools, maybe, or how to go about it, because, you know, especially like for fast babies, they hear fasts are usually like, they come with a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're feeling like uh, it's done and, and, the, and they might not exactly find a portal of how to actually even explain themselves, especially mm -hmm. for those in rural areas. Mm -hmm. And some even equate it to witchcraft as well. They were like, hey, nimeza, and then mtu ananiroga. But then it's like you said, it will go away after two weeks. How can they cope through that in as much as it doesn't need medication now? Mm -hmm. So now for the baby blues, like I said, it wears off by itself. Right. So all you need to do as a mom is keep going with your day to day. You know, uh, affirmations work, you know, a good support system also works. By support right. system, I mean having good help in terms of people around you during, you know, this, this time that you've just given birth and everything. Right. Your partner can also play a huge role in ma making sure, like, ukofiti too. Yeah. No, that is, that is the, the father of the baby. The father of the baby, yes. Right. Or even the parents uh, to to the uh, you know new parents, you know your right. mother, the mother mm -hmm. to the to the new mom, or right. the mother to the you know husband. Generally, the family. The support. family, yes. Right. The mm -hmm. family support goes a long way in such a time. Because okay. again, now we look into now postpartum. Right. So postpartum, it's what you said. It can go all the way to up to three years. So it might uh -huh. start within the first two weeks. It might go one month. It might go um, a few months, it might go one year, years. If it's not taken care of, it will keep on, you know, affecting Escalating. the mom and the connection right. of the baby. So for mm -hmm. this one, baby blues, I said you can take care of yourself and you can take care of the baby. But for postpartum, postpartum. Mm -hmm. you start neglecting yourself too. So basic things, small things like, you know, grooming yourself, taking a shower, you know, just taking care of yourself, it becomes a task. A problem. It becomes yeah. a problem. The mm -hmm. same thing with taking care of the baby. So you don't even take care of the baby. You don't nurse the baby. You don't want to right. see, for some people, they don't want to see the baby. Or you even don't. breastfeed. Yes. Because it's like you mentioned, it's a disconnection. Yes. So you have a complete disconnection mm -hmm. with, with your baby. You don't even want, not just also your baby, also with your family. You want to isolate Kidogo. Right. There's mm -hmm. frequent crying. For some people, there's increased appetite. For some, there's a loss of appetite. Yeah. And then now the red flag to eat is where now you start having ideations of harming yourself or harming the, the baby the or baby. both of you now or both of you now and also another person or another person yes right. so now in this case like i said they are contributing uh, factors and they're also risk factors so when i say risk factors i mean people that are at a risk of having postpartum yeah. So these are people that have a history of mood disorders. Remember I told you mood disorders are either depression or mm. bipolar. So if you right. have a history of bipolar or if you have a history of depression, then high yeah. chances are you might get it. And also, some of these psychological conditions are genetic. So right. if someone... Like you can inherit... Yes. <laughs> your mother used to be angry all the time. And then you... <laughs> you just inherited it. anger from your mom. Yes. <laughs> and they say, we're going to take you to a pastor, we do deliverance. I like the way you <laughs> can that work? your mom, why not your dad, yeah. but anyway. Right, I know. <laughs> or your dad at, at 30 just uh, shocked us. So it's yeah. like you're carrying... And it, it, it's, it's interesting because we had mentioned that in our intro where I was trying to share with my co-host that there's people who've inherited problems from their parents, like mm -hmm. you are rejected by your dad. So you'll constantly keep on meeting men who reject you. I'm a man who just do you exactly the way your dad did your mom in that, mm -hmm. you know, quotation mm -hmm. language. So it's like a pattern extending, it is right? A pattern. And, and is there a way we can solve it so that we help people out here? Yeah, by understanding the patterns and learning how to break them. Okay. So allow me to digress. Please Please get, get deeper into it. Yes. So you see, like what you mentioned, the example you gave, uh, your, your, your dad wasn't treating your mom well. You end up finding that you attracting similar men and everything. So these are things we call core beliefs. So core uh -huh. beliefs in layman terms are the glasses we use to see life with. Right. So through core beliefs we formulate certain assumptions and we formulate certain rules Facades about life. and realities. Yes. Right. yes. So for uh -huh. you maybe you feel like this is how love should be. 
Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've heard of people who've grown up in abusive homes and Absolutely. they feel like mm -hmm. this is what real love is because yeah. this is what dad used to do to mom and she's right. still stuck around and so and that's what they've known yes. all their lives so yeah. in one way or another you start attracting that you start going after that right right so you need to first of all understand what core beliefs you've learned from your childhood experiences and these core yeah. beliefs are also learned by just observing right? right so what are some of those core beliefs you've learned and this is where you hear things like unlearning certain you know behaviors, behaviors that you had you know experiences, you know, experiences, as experiences as well. yes mm -hmm. uh relearning some of the things that worked back then and right. learning new ways to cut off you know the toxic the toxic uh, traits, traits that you yeah. know has been passed on to generations and everything so it right. is true that you can carry certain burdens that you like trauma inheriting trauma, trauma exactly, exactly, right, and exactly. carrying it all along yes, your life yes. and you might not even be aware of it Exactly. That so can be dangerous. It is yeah? dangerous. And also, another thing is also understanding your attachment styles. How do you attach to Right. We'll talk right. about that attachment because <laughs> there's, there's a friend who was telling me, uh, she, she's also, I think, at uh, some psychosocial support organization, and she was sharing that there's people who, uh, she has friends, when they talk to her, when they text her and she doesn't respond in like 10 minutes, the other friend feels like, and I'm ignore, or mm -hmm. I'm, she, she has started dating somebody else. Mm -hmm. So they are so attached to a point. Yani, the reality is that if you're not responding to me, you're dating someone else. Now see Ivo And exactly. she knows that that's a, a type of attachment. We'll talk about it, please. So again, attachment are also come from experiences you had. What type of attachment did you and your caregiver have so by caregiver i mean either your parents your your siblings people who are around you when you're growing up right, right. so the two main types of attachment which is secure and anxious but right. now under mm -hmm. the anxious the anxious attachment is divided into three uh -huh. there's anxious avoidance anxious disorganized and and so on so for you you need to understand what type of uh, attachment do you have so if you have an anxious attachment then the main thing that i normally tell my clients is to understand if it's an anxious attachment what soothes your anxious attachment because yeah. if you know i have an anxious attachment what would soothe it yeah. so understanding soothing it meaning by soothing i mean if i'm that type of when i text you i start feeling like you're ignoring me and everything right. what would soothe that so maybe oh, okay. something that would soothe that is a reassurance of just understand if I text, if you text me and I don't reply immediately, I'm a little bit held up, but right. I'll eventually get, yes, generally. but I'll eventually get back <laughs> to you. Yeah. So when you tell me that, make sure you get back to me. So that soothes me. So that right. reassurance. It's, it's like a form of assurance and affirmation. Yes. And what is usually happening in the mind of this person who always feels like that? Like in a text, Mutuna respond, they'll get angry. So they definitely get angry. So yeah. maybe yeah. they had some sort of abandonment when they were young. All right. So it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. So right. again, you really need... So for, for such people, the first thing that we normally do is something called tracing your anxious attachment. So right. by tracing your anxious attachment, we do... I do it in three decades. If you're 30 years, we do it in three decades. So from age one to 10, of course, you won't remember what happened within the first uh, five years of your life, so maybe from age six to ten. I can what remember happened? what happened to me from first, <laughs> <laughs> from year one to maybe maybe let's say from year three. But for me, I yes, can. Yes. I, I have images of everything that transpired. Exactly. So in that case, when you're tracing it, we try and figure out what happened in age one to ten, ten to twenty, twenty to, to 30. thirty. So yeah. understanding that by this, I mean what was difficult for you, what was an uncomfortable attachment you had with someone. Right. So by tracing it, when you look, the more you've ticked in every Lost decade, boxes, you know. then that's where the issue started. So if you've... So you start addressing it now. Like yes. somebody's 45, but you're helping him solve things that happened, happened to him at five years old. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's now crazy. Now that's where also things like reparenting comes oh, in. reparenting. You know, yes, mm -hmm. reparenting yourself. Because again, if people feel like there's certain things that, you know, they, they should missed, have gotten from you know, their parents, but they missed. They didn't, and then they you know. carry that grudge with them. So why don't, you're now old enough, you have the means, you, you're psychologically capable of doing this. So why don't you do it yourself? So reparenting right. comes in. So again... So you do it yourself, not like yes. finding it in somebody else? No. You do it yourself. Right. The, the main purpose of therapy, I normally say, is to become dependent. 
not oh, self dependent. Yes, not self dependent, not dependent, dependent. to someone else. Okay. In the sense that even with soothing anxious attachment, yes, I need reassurance, but can you give it to yourself first? Right. Can you sit down and tell yourself, okay, now I'm bugging, right. I'm overthinking, I'm yeah. doing this, I need to chill. Can you be able to control your thoughts yourself, before you yeah. expect someone else to manage you or, or something, like manage your emotions and all that. So it needs right. to start from within. So yeah. again, is understanding what is the whole, what am I missing out on? What right. is that thing? Because again, you'll realize there are certain people who crave relationships, <coughs> right? <coughs> so if you're craving this relationship, what exactly what is that hole that you want you're looking fill? for to yes fill what is the that void, thing that right. that what is that void you and can you fill that void yourself because if you can't right. fill that void yourself then you're in big trouble because you'll always you'll always be, be a from people one pleaser. to another yes right. you'll always find yourself conforming into what you think people want so that you right. can fit in and everything so again yeah. again also self-awareness and everything so we'll, we'll come back to that and the insecurities and also anger because i think in one of our interests we had talked about that as well now to mothers who um start feeling abandoned we we we, we were stuck there uh, an incident for example uh she got pregnant the father was uh i'll say maybe the 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 the, 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 the person who they got pregnant with is not in the picture in short, they abandoned mm -hmm. them. So they start feeling neglected. They are so angry. Maybe it's around six months before at a, the, the baby is due. Mm -hmm. So they feel abandoned. They feel rejected. And now they start receiving pressure from the parents. They'll be like, Sir, I look at Mimba. Do you have a I said, look at you. You've disappointed us. Is there a way the baby is marinating in that rejection and that anger and frustration? And to a point, when this baby will be born, they will definitely have those patterns of abandonment, rejection, and anger. Is it possible? Is it happening? Or it's a fact, it's a reality? It's actually, it is a, a reality that parents uh, or moms who don't manage their postpartum, it can be transferred to the kids psychological, psychologically. So you'll find the kid will start you know, getting some of it. Like I said, some of these things is how you interacted with your caregivers. So imagine mm -hmm. you had a mom who didn't want to nurse you, a mom who was, you know, dismissive and everything. So yeah. growing up, you also carry that with you. So it is a fact that if it's not resolved, I live by the mom and everything and people around her and so on, it yeah. can transfer to the kid. So, right. yes. But your story of marinate in the womb. In, in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because I had some, uh, I think it was Yanle who said that, you know, your kid marinated in rejection. The moment you, the father, the father went missing from the picture, like the mother got disappointed and that energy was transferred <laughs> consciously to the baby. So the kid is always carrying, you know, anger and rejection and abandonment and she's not aware. So it's like, wow, that's, that must be intense. Very intense. Now, when it comes still to postpartum, is there like medical treatment for, especially mothers that have gone f into it for like maybe let's say three, three months as well? Is there yeah. a medical treatment? Uh, can they seek psychosocial support? Are there organizations that are even uh, ready to help mothers that are going through postpartum? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, so the treatment uh, plan, again, is either medication or psychotherapy, but again, depending on the severity of the postpartum that the person has. Because again, remember I mentioned again, there's another type that is called postpartum psychosis. So okay. for postpartum psychosis, it needs an inpatient type of thing, whereby I'm a like the, the mom is separated from the kid okay. for a short period, a kaitu oh. hosi, a pateo mm -hmm. treatment and everything. But if it's postpartum, then we can do psychotherapy without necessarily going to hosi for inpatient. We can do psychotherapy and medication, uh, antidepressants can also uh, come in and everything so right. let me just mention the difference between yeah, yeah. postpartum i mentioned the difference between postpartum and, and baby, baby blues, blues. Yeah. so let me mention postpartum and uh, depression and postpartum psychosis so postpartum right. psychosis like i mentioned there are different types categories of mental health so i already mentioned the mood the anxiety the personality and then there's a different type of uh disorder that is called psychotic disorders so under right. psychotic disorders it's things like mm. so by the way they call it korogo I don't know if you've heard of such incidents. They say, hey, Unfortunately, really, this is Africa, so most definitely, yeah. so could be true. 
contributing factor as no, well? No, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that. I'll talk medically and scientifically, right. but I don't know anything <laughs> But that's about more spiritual. It. Yes, I think that's more spiritual. But then again, I normally say there's nothing wrong with believing in spirituality and also getting seeking medical, medical help. Medical help, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So for that one, uh, that is specifically called schizophrenia. So with schizophrenia, it has hallucinations, it has illusions, and it has delusions. So hallucinations, there is visual and there's auditory. So visual and auditory is whereby you hear things that are not there or you see things that are not there. And then delusions is whereby you believe in... Uh, you believe in something that is not necessarily true. So for uh, postpartum psychosis, you have those illusions, you have those delusions, you have those hallucinations, but are specifically targeted towards the baby. Right. So this is whereby you feel like the baby is evil, so you need to kill the baby to save uh, you know, the population or to save it from itself and everything. So right. all these psychoses are directly targeted towards the baby. So the difference between that and schizophrenia is schizophrenia, it's general, just you and your illusions and delusions and everything. Okay. But for postpartum psychosis, it's directly targeted towards the baby. So this is where you find either parents, moms kill their babies because they feel like either the baby is evil or the baby, whatever reason that they might have in their head. So that right. is postpartum psychosis. So the psychosis is a different level with postpartum. Right. Yes. Let's digress in just a minute as we end. Um, for example, now for a person away from postpartum, just a little bit from your expert's mindset. For example, a person who has extreme anger, uh, could be both male or female. How can they heal from, you know, things that make them angry? You'd find like just, just something small, like, you know, somebody stepping on your foot mm -hmm. in a car mm -hmm. or in a matatu, mm -hmm. it makes your entire day bad. Like, mm -hmm. you already have a bad day. You're already sad, angry, disappointed. Mm -hmm. And when you come to work or wherever you're going, you project the same anger onto other people as well. And it seems like now people start saying you have a problem. Mm -hmm. But then if only we sat down and actually ask, what is ailing you? What is making mm -hmm. you angry? Mm -hmm. How can you heal such a person? So, Again, I'll digress just a little bit, just for you to understand it better. Like I said, remember I mentioned something called a cognitive triangle in terms of how you interpret situation. So two scenarios, mimi ni kanyagwe kwa mat. The way I'll interpret it is haku niona, so I'll just brush it off. But in for your you, mind, this in is my happening mind, in your yes, mind. Yes, this is happening yeah. in my mind. But for you, you will either catastrophizing is worst case scenario thinking okay. of worst case scenarios. So for you, you'll catastrophize and be like, um, like, why would mm, he even yeah. step on me? So I'm of an course, an and I'm, I'm an an so uh -huh. of course, uta so that right. is one way of looking at it. Uh, restructuring your thoughts. Another right. way is understand, there's something we call anger icebergs. When you're dealing with anger management, the first thing we look at is an anger iceberg. So iceberg, when you yuka. Ukuju, it may look small, it may look big, but ukuchini, it either is huge or small. So understanding your anger iceberg is, what I can see up at you is the anger that I have, the boiling anger and everything, but what is really feeding it, right? right. <laughs> Same scenario kwa mat, maybe ni mejam, if you have home, nilika, nilika, my partner or something. Or so or caretaker <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever right? I'm a jirani to aliamkaki blast music, nikaboeka. And you carry that energy. And I carry work. that energy. So uh -huh. under my anger iceberg, uh -huh. what what this person saw was the anger, but whatever was feeding my anger is whatever issues I left home with. Right. So understanding your anger iceberg plays a big role because you understand the bigger picture. Right. Why am I really angry? So right. addressing So that it's good to ask yourself, why am I really angry? Why is this coming? Or, and why am I sad, right? Yes. Right. So I'm told we have to wrap it up. So uh, okay. tell us tell us about your organization and how people can plug in if they need your uh, psychosocial support and some of the services you offer in just less than a minute. Uh, this is your camera and you can give out your number as well. This is okay. your camera. So you can reach us out at hugs.co.ke on all platforms. We actually have an event on Saturday, so you can also come through. It's going to be a fun event uh, hosted by Anga IMAX. So we'll talk about anxiety, depression, and all that. Uh, you can reach us through 0715 929 406. All right, once again, yes. say the number. 
All right. Uh, and yes. thank you so much, um, Katha, for your time. She's a lead psychologist and founder of HUGS organization in full. HUGS is? Hardiness and Earth's Great Success. Hardiness? And Earth's Great Success. So hardiness right. is more like resilience. So when you're resilient, you can tap into your potential and everything. So right. That's what we try to instill in youth. So our organization also focuses on adolescents and youths. Right. Yes. And it's an organization run by the youths for the youths. So right. Run by the youth for the youth. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and, and definitely if you have any other insights, be easy to call in and say you want to pop by. <laughs> it's okay. All right. And we're going to take a very short break, but you can interact with us on that hashtag going in the morning at y244 underscore channel at Brian Sekono. When we come back with much more, stick around.